Hello, AVI4M. We're going to continue looking at portraits in this video. So in this video, I'm going to be painting a random face. The reason why I chose the face I did is because uh, he actually has some imperfections in his skin. His skin tone is not perfect and he has some very interesting features. So we've already learned about how to do a grid and how to draw according to that grid. So you're following square by square exactly what you see. You'd continue drawing until all the features are recorded and generally speaking you want the outline only. You don't want to have a lot of detail because you're just going to be painting over top of this anyway. Now you may wish to erase the grid lines and I've told a few of you to do that and that's in case your paint isn't thick enough and does not cover all of the grid lines. We don't want any gray going all over the place when you're doing a wash and you want to make sure that um, there's no grid lines going through your background when you're all done. That would be really annoying. After that, then we're going to start blocking in some of the dark areas first and then the darker areas in the skin. And I will go over that in a minute. All right, so as you can tell, the video has been fast forwarded just because you um, are gonna get really bored if you saw how long this actually was. Um, and you can tell that sometimes I'm gonna actually grab my canvas, I'm gonna lift it towards me. Other times I use the easel. It's all a matter of preference, but feel free to move your canvas around so that you can get the best possible angle. Um, this is the quick part. You want to block it in very uh, quickly. You want the main outline. Know that you will end up painting more details on top. So it's important that it's accurate as far as the main outline and the general color, but you're not going to get all of the tones that you see in his hair with one simple color. So I will come back at the end and start layering on top. You look closely, you can see that I'm using a dry brush and I'm also mixing in a lighter tone on top. I'm doing a stippling action, which means up and down, and I'm sort of softening some of the edges as well because he has dreadlocks, so some of them are kind of coming undone, some of them are a little bit irregular. So that's why I'm using the brush stroke that I am. So you would have seen me use some wet and dry brush blending techniques. Now I'm going to do the same thing when I block in all the dark tones. So I found the darkest tone in his skin. It's a little bit exaggerated, but we want that. He has very warm skin tones in his face, so that's why I did a bit of this orange color. And I'm 
blocking in all of the dark areas, including some of the outlines around his mouth, his nostrils, his eyes. And that is so that I have some accurate lines to work with. And that creates shadows for later on. Even though I will paint on top, it does make a huge difference when you see these dark tones underneath. So I'm trying very hard to be accurate. You'll see my head is moving a lot towards the picture. I wanna be looking just as much as I am painting. This is the classical underpainting method. Now, it was originally done with oil painting. We're using acrylic. So later on, I'll be taking some water and just blending in some of the areas so that the whole canvas has paint on it. So you can see um, every small detail I'm trying to block in. Uh, this part is still fairly quick. We're still moving fairly quickly at this point because we want to get the general uh, idea and layers and now you can see I'm getting some water. I've blended it in I've, I've loosened it in some of the edges um, So it's a little bit smooth, but it still looks a little bit rough and that's okay because we will be painting on top And this will create a nice loose brush stroke and some great shadows to create depth While I'm, dr I'm waiting for some areas to dry, you'll notice I come back in, I'm adding more details into the, his dreadlocks, like the shadows around his ears. This is a good method while you're waiting for the canvas to dry. You want to not be just sitting there doing nothing, even though it might be tempting to have a chat or go on your phone. Um, you want to take advantage of that opportunity, so work on another area that has already dried. That is the benefit of acrylic paint, it dries quickly. Okay, so when we look close up at all the different colors in the skin, you can see that I've added in some yellows, whites, blues even, and I'm gonna show you that process. So I have to apologize, some of this footage is at night and the screen from the back of the, com like it, from the computer is coming through the back of the canvas. So it might be a little bit difficult to see, but hopefully you can see how I'm layering the color. Um, a lot of the time I'm using two brushes, so I'm taking the color then I'm doing dry brush blending. Sometimes I'll use my finger. That's me just being a little bit lazy. Um, either is fine, it's whatever you sort of prefer. Um, and you can see a lot of that is light because I already have my darks and I have some of my mid medium tones. So a lot of the time I'm painting lighter on top. Um, and that will also serve well when I go in and do my highlights because I'll have a base that I've done the highlights on top of. Uh, you'll see I have some weird bright areas around his mouth and that is because of his facial hair. So I looked very closely at the photo and there's some sort of blue-gray tone around his mouth and that was uh, sort of like the five o'clock shadow, that, sh uh, that um, shading. The re that was another reason I chose this guy because he has a little bit of stubble on his face and some of you will be working with the same challenges of having facial hair. The key is not to draw every single hair. I will go over this again later on when I do my final touches on his facial hair. So you can see I'm constantly going back and forth between different colors, kind of moving all over the canvas. You may choose to work in like just his forehead, then just his eyes. That's your choice. I prefer to kind of go around and use all my colors at once. Um, and that way I'm sort of slowly working it up. When it comes to the features though, the eyes, nose and mouth, I do work at those one at a time once I feel like I've built up the skin uh, an adequate amount.
Okay, now I'm going to be painting his eye, his left eye. And you'll see that I'm doing, a, again, a lot of wet and dry brush blending, moving fairly quickly. Now some of these videos um, are a little bit blurry and that's just because I was holding the camera with one hand and painting with the other, which in retrospect was a bad decision. Um, but you can see the general method here of layering. I start with the dark lines and if I just left that, it would look really awful, like he was wearing really bad makeup. Um, but the reason why I do the dark first is because it's easier to paint in around with light tones and lessen that line than trying to create a very, very, very thin line. Um, and now I'll start blocking in the pupil and the iris. You'll notice that I did some shading previously in the eye um, on the corners. So it's important to know that um, inside the white part of the eye, it's not just white. There are some gray parts in the corner. We have um, some pink areas around the outside edges and you're also going to get your highlights and that's going to continue in the iris and the pupil. Okay, we're back to daytime and if you think the colors have changed, a lot of it has to do with the, la the lighting of the, uh, the, the video. Uh, so now I'm starting to block in his eyebrow and it's really important not to overdo the eyebrow. Otherwise, it's gonna look like he painted his eyebrows on and well, that would really change his look dramatically. So I'm doing a lot of wash. So I have a lot of water in with my paint and I'm doing that um, in the areas where his eyebrows sort of join with his skin and uh, the areas where it's a bit thicker where I can't tell where the hair is growing, I've just left that as a block. Now you can see that I'm mixing the color of his lips and um, you'll notice sometimes I hold my brush right up to the screen or the picture. That's so that I can ensure accuracy. Now sometimes I'll mix a lot of color all at once for all the different tones in the lip. Uh, if I do that, I have to work very, very quickly though because um, obviously we know acrylic paint dries very quickly. Uh, you'll notice that I'm doing sort of a weird lip line or outline thing going on here. Uh, that's just because I want to then blend on top uh, to show the skin line. So uh, there's a color line of your lip, but the skin also goes over top. This is how we know uh, the difference between men and women. A lot of the time women will try to define that line, uh, whereas men, if we want it to look more masculine, will want to make that line uh, less obvious and that's why I'm doing a lot of blending over the outside lines of his lips. I'm also adding all the different tones and colors quite block like and then um, you'll have to excuse my head because it blocks a lot of these uh, these details unfortunately uh, but you can see how I'm building in some of the highlights and the darker areas. I also take a, f a fair bit of time to work around so it's important to understand that each part of the face is a shape. It's a three-dimensional uh, shape and it all works together. So that's why I've spent a lot of time defining the shadow underneath his lip and on his chin because I want to create the illusion that it's coming towards us, uh, both his chin and underneath his lip. Uh, this is a way you can build dimension without color. We don't want to just use color to define the lips, otherwise it's going to look like he's wearing lipstick. Instead, we want to use a lot of the shading around the mouth so that we see um, it's the natural shape of his bone structure, not um, because he decided to wear lipstick that day. Uh, and you'll notice I'm adding some highlights and shadows up even towards the nose and the cheeks. Um, and this just happens because as I continue to blend the color out, I may see other parts where I need that color. So I'm constantly fixing and adapting as I'm working. Um, some people really don't like that. They want to get one thing completely done and then move on to that next. This is a matter of preference. You'll also notice I sort of dab it sometimes. Uh, that's to create those little imperfections. So I'm not asking you guys to paint every single pimple on your face. That would be unfortunate for all of us. Um, but what I really want is for you to see that skin tone isn't even, sometimes you'll see the way the pores sit, wrinkles, all of that, and you can sort of allude to that with, uh, with your brush stroke without going into too much detail. Um, and that's one of the beauties of painting is that we can sort of exaggerate some areas that we're a little bit maybe more pleased with in ourselves.
Okay, now I'm painting the facial hair that I promised you I'd spend some time with. So I'm taking um, sort of a gray brown color, I'm dabbing it along, but then I'm taking a dry brush or you can use a damp brush and I'm sort of blending that out so that you barely see any of the dots. And that is just because I want to give the illusion of facial hair, but because his beard isn't very long, it's just basically a five o'clock shadow. I'm just trying to uh, show that there is facial hair there, but it's been shaved. Um, and again, I don't want to spend forever defining every single detail. I'm making that artistic choice um, to give just the brush stroke or the texture of it, not each individual hair follicle. That would be photorealism and that's not exactly what I'm hoping to achieve in this grade 12 painting. Um, so I think it's important we're a little bit realistic. Okay, and so we are going to look at the final product a little bit up close. Now, obviously I didn't finish like his eye and sort of the right side of his face. Um, perhaps I will show that to you in class. Uh, but you can see the different textures, some of the exaggerated colors, all the different brush strokes. Some areas are blended, some areas are left. And a lot of that was based on Jenny Saville and the work that we studied of hers. Okay, and that concludes the tutorial. Hopefully you guys learned something. Feel free to ask me questions.